Irish Trekkie just stopping by to let you know that today's video is brought to you by our sponsors, Starfleet International. Starfleet International is the world's largest and oldest Star Trek fan association, providing a place where Star Trek fans can meet up, get to know each other, have fun and share in their love of Star Trek. I'm a member over here in Ireland in Region 20, so why not help out the channel, jump down to the description box and head over and let them know that Irish Trekkie sent you. And maybe we can meet up for one of their fantastic events. Greetings folks and welcome back to another Star Trek The Official Starships Collection issue review. This time featuring issue 99, we have the assimilated Arctic 1. Resistance is indeed futile or futile, again, depending on where you are in the world. So, um, yeah, this looks to be a very interesting and surprising model to me, which I'll go into in further detail in the video. So hopefully you've been enjoying my recent spamming of uh, the collection reviews. I've been a bit slow initially, but um, I should be all up to speed here now. And um, the just to let you know, I, I have ordered the Franklin, but it's still on the way. So hopefully it'll be here soon. But if you've missed out on issue 98 and 97, do check the playlist. You should be able to watch those um, after this video. So let's put the model to one side and let's have a look at the magazine, shall we? So here we have issue 99. Very interesting graphic here. It's all sorts of assimilated, isn't it? So we have operated by the Borg. And this was a survey, Starfleet survey vessel. Launched in the 22nd century, 80 meters. So, um, yeah, not, not, not a sizable ship, but uh, decent. With a top speed of warp 4.98, modified that is. But we are talking about the assimilated uh, version of Arctic 1. So, we have our four sections. Arctic 1, designing the ship, how the Borg ended up on Enterprise and on-screen appearances. And I have seen, and fair play to Michael Kern, he put a video up on Facebook on... Uh, mounting the ship <laughs> so um, i haven't seen it in a while now so hopefully i won't make a fool of myself but no one me and um, that's going to be a case no matter what so here we have the profile view of the simulated arctic one very unique very different from what we've seen before in the past Um we have additional information here it now has a cutting beam a proton based energy beam uh, 2153 it was destroyed and it uh, had approximate crew of 29 and then we have some close-up shots of all the lovely griebling and borg detailing there so here we have a nice aft view god it's all over the place isn't it it's so like it's perfect for what it is um because the story like basically the story is um there's arctic one pre uh, assimilation and um, but it was c taken over by the Borg left over from the time shenanigans and first contact I love that story that interweaving nature of Star Trek that we all love I'm not the biggest fan of time travel I think it's a bit of a cop-out in a lot of situations but when used right it can be very interesting so um obviously limited capabilities of Arctic one it was an atmospheric and short-range survey ship um but obviously the Borg with their uh, advanced technology and assimilation techniques, modify the ship and then, you know, gather technology along the way, hence adding bits in and, you know, stuff like that as well. Hence, it's all kind of a mishmash. Um, so it's really cool to see. So as you can see here, uh, the assimilated Arctic One was bristling with Borg technology that had been built up over the original hull. Under Borg control, it continued to evolve rapidly, becoming larger, faster and more deadly. Um, the Borg modified most of the primary systems on Arctic 1 as well as fitting hull plating, enhancing the engines and fitting weapons nodes. So they replaced the skids with, uh, I, think the, I think there's the cutting beam and the proton weapon. Um, and you can see all the kind of the power nodes and stuff like that as well. Um, the original uh, top speed was 1.4 but we saw there earlier it maxed out at 4.89 which is substantial. Um, to say the least and um, the one nice nod here I'll see if I can get the image and pop it in if it's not in the magazine but uh, there was quite a visible uh, model of the saucer section of the Enterprise E in the background of one of these shots I remember <laughs> which was a nice again nod and little easter egg by the um, the makers of the episode 
Uh, here we have the Arctic One attacking another ship, freighter. I can't remember exactly who it was. So again, cutting parts off it and absorbing that into its own as well. Again, enhancing the abilities of the Arctic One. Um, here we have the profile of the ship. So primary propulsion reactor, communications array on the top, bridges in the same place. Yeah, cutting beam, proton energy weapons, distribution nodes. Again, very Borg. The look, the feel, the attitude of the ship, definitely Borg. And um, thankfully, we can see it was destroyed. Yes, they didn't complete its mission. Uh, Archer uh, and Reed had taken out the... So once they had taken out the EPS manifold, this guy, um, that gave it the ability to uh, use explosives to destroy um, the ship. So here we have a piece on designing um, the Arctic Explorer by John Eves. So again, some fantastic illustrations before and after. So you can see the skids uh, being um, repurposed into weapons there as well. So again, the name Arctic One survey ship it's not going to be big but it's going to be purposeful like um it's written here about using inspiration and um, snow plows and various other vehicles as well putting skids because you're going to be on softer material rather than landing pads or wheels um so i like that but again it's capable of warp speed so again if you're going to customize a ship why have it warp capable if you're only going to limit it to the poles on earth so again going off to you know the ice moons or or other planets that have very cold environments this is a purpose-built ship so um something that we haven't seen a huge amount of in star trek and um, i love the profile of it and uh, you can see how the the legs kind of stitch up into it but you, they're still visible and here we have it you know we have a little uh tracked vehicle here with them but you can kind of get a sense of the scale as well love that and then you can see the design um cg render of it as well getting built up built up from the sketches of uh, john Eves as well so great read um john like all the other designers give a lot of time to ben and the gang to kind of give the background of and the inspiration of a lot of their designs as well so always always worth a great read um, so Borg Beginnings. So again, as I said, I really liked the way this story was um, architected and woven into Enterprise. And uh, again, for all you time shenanigan fans out there, um, I think you'd like it too. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much the magazine here for Arctic One. So it was in the episode Regeneration and Enterprise and designed by John Eves. Some trivia. And we have finally, or will finally be at issue one. 100 unbelievable i know like i know it's just another number but 100 is always like a special i know we have more than 100 models with specials and convention uh runs and uh mirror universe versions but this is issue 100 so it has to have some pomp and ceremony so let me work on that and let's see if we can make that a little bit special but anyway let's close out in the magazine so we have the assimilated arctic one let's take it out of our box and let's have a look at this model shall we Oh my, is one word that comes to mind. <laughs> two, two words that come to mind looking at this. Um, wow. Um, actually, wow. This has really surprised me. Like when I first saw this ship, I was like, uh, okay, what have they done with the color? It's so dark. And um, I wasn't impressed, to be honest with you. But uh, looking at this, the amount of sculpt detail on this is absolutely phenomenal and i haven't shown you the other side of it like look at the back component there look at this oh my word this is a phenomenal model color i don't know i don't know about the color it just looks a little bit too dark but hands down the intricacies of this sculpt is phenomenal and even the paint apps like the nodes the power modules i know there's just little green dots but they're perfectly done everything alignment wise is absolutely fantastic that is 
outstanding. Back, they're a little, uh, they look a little bit kind of rough and ready. Um, maybe if they're like patterned or something, but it's, it could be spot on to it. But like, look at all the layers, the EPS manifolds, the antennae. I'm just soaking all this in at the moment. Like, look at the beams, the beam cutters, where the skids were. Like, okay, paint-wise, it's two tones, black and green. But the sculpt is the winner on this. The design of the ship is lovely. I love how we can still see the Arctic 1 here. But then it's just like complete, it's like a infestation, a growth on the ship. And you can kind of like work out, okay, this is from another ship, this is from another ship. Just graft it on. Curious to know what you think at home um, off this. This is, this, is, this is completely left field for me. Because like the promo shots were just like, no, I don't like it. I don't like it. Why didn't you just do the, the original one? But um, wow. This is cool. Like, hands down, it's one of the finest sculpt models that I've seen in the collection. In my opinion. May not be yours, may not align with your opinion, but for me, it is spot on. And everything, like, look look at this. Look at that antenna there. It's like, wow. <laughs> and the alignment of it's pretty cool as well. Um, I'm going to put her on the stand. So I think we've kind of danced around the detailing as much as we can here. So let's put her on the stand, this this interesting stand, and let's compare it to a ship in the line, shall we? So I'm just getting the stand here. So as you can see, it's quite unique. So it does kind of marry up with the back of it here, but you have to be careful. It sits in between that antennae that I just showed you. So you see that there's an antennae just where I'm pointing my finger to there. And then there's a little, another plastic peg on this side. I could probably push it down a little bit more, but it's in there. That must have been tricky to kind of go, okay, we have a great ship here, but how the hell are we going to mount it? Yeah, I just pushed it in just a little bit more there. Um, I wouldn't want to be taking that in and out and... Word of advice, don't be keeping this on the edge of your collection. If you have a shelving unit, put it a little bit in from the edge because if this tumbles, I, um, I think you'd be heartbroken, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, Base-wise, I have a 1970 A-A, Arctic 1, assimilated. So uh, let's put her on the turntable and compare to a ship in the line, shall we? I wrestled with what to compare this ship to. Do I take out the Enterprise or another Enterprise era ship? But I figured I'd take out the Borg Sphere because, again, that was this ship that um, was destroyed or that made it back in time um, and was destroyed by the Enterprise E in orbit off uh, the Earth um, over Montana. And this is the ship where these Borg came from. And I don't often get an opportunity to take out the Sphere because it is a nice model. And you can see the influences um obviously the tonals are there but this is a little bit more uh, there's kind of a lot more silver accents on the sphere than there is on the arctic one but you can definitely see that there's not a million miles away from it but you can see that there is as well because this is a starfleet vessel that has been uh assimilated basically so i, I get that and i like it and i think that's a clever thing and a hard thing to design uh, into a ship as well. So and that's going to wrap up my issue 99. Um, I hope you enjoy that. And uh, soon enough we'll have the Daedalus uh, issue 100 coming our way as well. So uh, let me know in the comments below what you thought of Assimilated Arctic 1. And uh, join me over on my new Facebook group. And uh, say hi over on Twitter and Instagram if you so wish. And uh, as always thanks for taking the time out of your day um, to watch these. And I will see you in the next video. So take it easy and goodbye.